can tell a lot about a kid by what he draws, what he doodles. I think every kid has gone into their notebook during class and instead of paying attention started doodling. Of course you got the kids who are doing Mickey Mouse and Spongebob and you know I had my fair share of Spongebob drawings. There was one character that not many people drew except me. And that character was Larry the Cucumber from VeggieTales. If you didn't grow up Catholic or Christian like I did, then VeggieTales was probably not a part of your childhood. Hell, I don't even think some of my Catholic friends know about VeggieTales. For those of you who had never watched an episode of VeggieTales, VeggieTales was a Christian children's show about a neurotic tomato named Bob and a silly, dim-witted cucumber named Larry. Each episode, they'd get a message from a kid around the world that had a question about some problem they were having in their daily lives like bullies, doing their chores, or telling the truth. Bob and Larry would respond by telling them a story that connected to the moral of the day, sometimes parodying a certain part of pop culture or genre of film. They'd end the show with a Bible verse and remind the kids at home that God made you special, and he loves you very much. It's pretty fair to say that children's Christian media tends to be hokey and corny, and most of them, you know, fade into obscurity. But not VeggieTales. No, VeggieTales would go on to produce DVD after DVD, toy after toy, album after album. They would perform live shows, release theatrical films, birth spin-off TV shows, and become a massive hit among Christian families. I'd even find copies of VeggieTales at video stores and Blockbuster and Hollywood Video. Oh my gosh, those places don't exist anymore. But yeah, the VeggieTales DVDs were a major part of my childhood. And they even inspired me to become an animator because yes, they too had behind the scenes documentaries on the DVDs. In fact, their DVDs came packed with all kinds of cool special features. They had games and activities and trivia and even a how to draw section. In the middle of the show, there would usually be silly songs with Larry. The part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. These parts were pretty much always the best. The songs were usually catchy, creative, fun. The concepts were always hilariously silly and sometimes they had to do with the moral of the day or sometimes they just straight up made no sense. Either way, these were always the most memorable part of the show. I still find myself singing some of these songs to this day. I don't think I've watched an episode of VeggieTales in like years. So. To reconnect with my roots, I decided to watch every VeggieTales DVD I own. Eh, give or take. And some of them are on VHS, which I can't play anymore. Honestly, it's probably for the best I didn't watch all of them. I have been watching VeggieTales for three days. Alright, let's go. Tiny alien takes advantage of a clueless chump by forcing him to lie and cheat his way out of trouble. The alien grows and grows until it grows big enough to destroy the world. No, not that one. This is one of the oldest episodes of VeggieTales I own, and boy does it show. The animation is super primitive, but they really make up for it with these interesting shots. They really nailed the Tim Burton Batman aesthetic. Larry Boy is hilariously silly as always, and even a little bit sassy, which I didn't expect. This one doesn't have a silly song, so it's definitely a shorter episode, but the pacing doesn't feel rushed at all. Even the jokes are pretty good. I found myself laughing out loud a whole lot through this episode. The lesson of not lying is pretty good and represented pretty well through the obvious metaphor of the fib growing in size. It's just an all around pretty solid episode. Plus the Larry Boy theme song like kind of slaps. Three plunger ears out of five. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, where do I even begin with this one? This episode is top notch. Like, firstly, it tackles a question that even some adults have. If God is good and really cares about me, then why do bad things happen? While it doesn't give a super satisfying answer, it's solid enough for kids to understand. The music is fantastic, the songs are catchy, the score uses themes and motifs. 
The Silly Song is by far one of the best boy band parodies in children's media, and it, it's just so much more clever than a Christian children's show should be. The animation looks so much better at this point in Big Idea's timeline. The design is appealing, there are no straight lines or right angles, and, and all the shots are just super nice to look at. The jokes are solid on this one too, like I didn't expect an Eagles reference? And the fact that all of Joe's brothers are French cowboys with Jewish names. That's just, that's just funny. It's also just got a lot of heart. They, they kept a lot of the original Bible story intact here. Not all the characters are squeaky clean and nice, even little Joe himself. And there are actual stakes and moments of tension. Like like one character just friggin' gets killed. Like, like straight up murdered. Definitely one of Big ID's best. Five cacti out of five. <laughs> This episode has two stories in it, which VeggieTales did sometimes in the early 2000s, and one definitely outshines the other. Babysitter in Denial isn't particularly fun to watch, I definitely remember skipping past it as a kid. The whole older sibling jealous of the new baby thing is just so overplayed and tired, but I guess it's fine for all the kids who've never seen that plotline before. Plus they kinda glance over the whole slavery part of the Moses story, and the child murder. The main story is super good though. The main story, Duke and the Great Pie War, is super good though. Very creative with the whole painted storybook style. It has that charming silliness like Monty Python and has a ton of fourth wall breaks that are honestly funny every time. Kind of weak incorporation of the moral though. It's supposed to be about looking out for family and being selfless, but it's just weakly portrayed. Had a lot of good parts, but too many weak parts that call it a completely good episode. Three duckies out of five. I absolutely loved this one as a kid, mostly because I was a fan of Indiana Jones. Watching it again and it still holds up. The lesson here is about standing up to bullies and not resorting to violence or revenge and dealing with bullies through persistence, courage, and kindness. It's not really common to find that in a children's cartoon. And as someone who dealt with a few bullies as a kid, this episode's really nice. This one also has two stories, the first one being about Junior dealing with a bully on the playground. It's much better than Babysitter in Denial for sure, but it's still not my favorite. The main story, however, is incredibly solid. The story is compelling, it feels like an adventure, and they really nail the tone and style of Indiana Jones. The characters get a chance to show their flaws and their imperfections, which makes for much more compelling storytelling. The pacing is a little weird, with some parts going on too long and some not feeling long enough, but the entire country of Canada is the villain, so so that's fun. Also, how can Larry eat pizza if Bob is a tomato? That, is, that, that worries me, and I think about that pretty much every day. Four Canadians out of five. <laughs> If I thought Minnesota Cuke nailed the style of its source material, then they really nailed the tone of Lord of the Rings. They don't really follow the story of the source material, instead focusing on the moral of using your gifts to help others, but they really, really captured the essence of what makes Lord of the Rings feel like such an epic adventure. The music, the sweeping establishing shots, the moments of ambiance, everything falls into place pretty much perfectly. and. Also, apparently it's a musical for some reason. That's kind of weird. But at least the music's pretty good. The pacing is better on this one since there's only one story. It doesn't have to share spots with some other side story that I don't care about. But I do have to say that even though there are more jokes in this one than others, they weren't all funny. I just kind of did a lot of nose exhales. Maybe I was tired. I don't know. Beautiful animation. Solid evocation of Lord of the Rings. Four beans out of five. <laughs> Yes, yes, good, perfect, fantastic. Funny jokes, fantastic music, good writing, just great, great, great episode. The first story is cute and apparently about a real person, so that's pretty cool. The Gideon story is super well done and also kind of weird. It takes place in ancient Israel, but they also have modern technology and football it is weird, but it works. The marching band drumline sequence is fantastic, and the song Pa Grape Sings is delightfully jazzy. Maybe this was actually really good, or I was delirious from watching Talking Christian Vegetables for four hours, but man was this good. Five tubas out of five. I don't know 
if I can judge this one like the other ones because it's not really a typical VeggieTales episode. It's actually just a sing-along show of song covers recorded for their albums with little short films thrown in and a moral shoved in at the last second. It's definitely entertaining and I loved it as a kid, but it just seems a little haphazardly thrown together. It does surprisingly predict the humor of the future though. Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know! Why did the chicken cross the road? Weed eater. What is the solution to the equation 2 plus 2? I don't know! What does 2 plus 2 equal? Weed eater! The moral is that God is with us even in our worst days, but like I said, they didn't really try to make it cohesive with the story. Hell, I didn't even understand the moral as a kid, so that's already a problem. I give this one two weed eaters out of five. Now this is how you do a reboot. It's almost fitting that even Larry Boy gets the superhero reboot treatment, this time taking on the style of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man film. They nailed the tome of Raimi's style, and it really just FEELS LIKE SPIDER-MAN! This is the only episode I've watched that doesn't feel like a VeggieTales episode that's parodying a superhero movie. Straight up feels like its own superhero movie. It has awesome cinematography, a compelling storyline that doesn't feel rushed or forced. The, the script isn't just funny, but actually just tightly written, with setups and payoffs, foreshadowing, and symbols and actions that relate to theme. The moral is how the only way to deal with temptation and overindulgence is to ask for help from others. It's a pretty nice message, and it's portrayed pretty well in the story. This definitely is the show that feels the least preachy, because it really seems like they prioritized a compelling story over teaching a lesson, and in doing so, the lesson just came through much stronger. Even the rebooted theme song slaps just as hard as the original, and it also had a kick-ass PS2 game. Six bad apples out of five. <laughs> This marked the beginning of a whole new era of VeggieTales, with a whole new logo, intro sequence, and animation design. The format of the show stayed basically the same, but it just feels a bit more... new, I guess? Another really funny script this time around, they parody Extreme Home Makeover, if anyone still remembers that, and they even have some pretty good moments that made me laugh. At this point in my marathon, it really occurred to me how much the writing style of VeggieTales reminded me of Phineas and Ferb. I don't know for sure what it is about it, but they share a lot of the same writing quirks and comedic sensibilities. I can tell they updated the animation, but for some reason it just looks off to me. Like something isn't right. It doesn't have that same really polished cinematic look the older ones have. They also lean less into a style like they do in the older ones. The best VeggieTales shows were the ones that really emulate the style of the property they're satirizing. This one just feels... generic. They did, however, really lean in into the Disney musical style, which is really good. Pretty all around good, but nothing spectacular. Three crickets out of five. At this point, I had a couple more DVDs left to watch. I was just so burnt out, I couldn't watch anymore. Eh, besides, this video is long enough. But I think that these DVDs have given me more than a good enough idea of how good VeggieTales really is. Like I said, they have this writing style that's just akin to, to, to Phineas and Ferb. It's witty, and it's charmingly silly, and also has consistently well-written music. The folks over at Big Idea really put their heart and soul into all this. And that's what makes VeggieTales so special. So much Christian children's media isn't made by, by artists and writers who know absolutely what they're doing. VeggieTales wasn't constricted by, by budget or, or whether or not they were backed by a major studio. They had the writing ability, they had the creative talent, and they used their talents to create something that didn't just teach them Bible stories, but entertain them and, and, and teach them to love. Writers of VeggieTales knew that character and story came first, and that with the solid foundation of a quality script, they can make any message hit all the harder. Plus, the kids enjoy what they're watching. They love the characters, who have actual personalities and character flaws, unlike some Christian shows where all the good guys are perfect saints that do no wrong. The characters in the show end up learning alongside the kids at home. They make mistakes and mess up, but they value doing the right thing and constantly learning and improving to become a kinder, more loving person, which is exactly what Modeling Christ is supposed to be about. Yeah, but hey, who knows? I might be giving the rest of children's Christian media a bad rap. Maybe it's not as bad as I say it is. I mean, I, I knew you would come, but you've come. I have come. Well, it was worth a shot.
Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, you gotta subscribe, like, comment, do all the stuff that you usually do. If you want to see updates on videos before I post them, follow my Instagram at Balbert underscore art. This video isn't sponsored, but I do want to shout out Reclaim the Block. With all the craziness happening in the world, it feels like that we can't do anything, but organizations like this one provide a means for real, substantial, systemic change. Please consider donating if you have the means, or just, you know, read. Educate yourself. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you later. Thank you.